I'm Alexandra Leanhard with Elliott Wave TV, and I'm joined today by Chris Carolyn, who covers Europe and Asia for Elliott Wave International on a short-term basis. Chris, thanks for taking a couple of minutes for today's interview. It's great to be here, Alexandra, and talk to you again. So China's been making global headlines recently with Shanghai's sharp decline. What do you make of recent price action, and where do you see that market heading next? Um, well, it's it's a dramatic story, uh, and and it's a bubble that's that's imploding and and popping, and I think what's what's been very interesting is watching the government's reaction to the price decline and um, their attempts to turn the market around by propping it up and threatening sellers and and passing laws against uh, sellers and, and even threatening analysts. There were reports on Twitter this morning that certain banks are being told not to issue bearish analysis. And all of that really confirms right away, I think, for us that this is, is the beginning of, of a much larger down move in China because it's going to be very hard uh, to restore the type of, of destruction in, in psychology and investor confidence that's occurring there now. And when we look at the, at the Elliott wave structure and, and of, of the price movement, it's really confirming that. Prices were, were stable for a little bit, they were, but were never able to bounce above resistant levels. And, and um, so it's, it, it looks like still sharply lower prices to come in China. But it's also very hard to even know, you know, we can't even trust what the prices reported are. Because when you have an index, say, with, with 500 stocks and many of the stocks have stopped trading, then you really don't know the true price of the index because you don't know what price, uh, how to price those stocks that are halted. So um, it it's... It's very interesting that, that the market has very quickly become a trap. And, and I think people who are in China and longs in China, are it's going to be very hard for them to get out at any price. And switching regions to Europe, Greece's stock market remains closed and investors can't get out at the moment. What do you make of what's going on over there? Is that a problem that's isolated solely to Greece? Well, it's it's... It's Greece and China. You know, it's very interesting. I mean, Greece, the Athens Stock Exchange has been closed for a month. Um, and, you know, they're trying to reopen it. They're, they're trying to figure out ways to get it reopened. But, but it's, a, it's, of course, a completely different situation from China. In China, we had this bubble that, that, that blew up, and, and Greece has been in this major bear market for a few years. But to me, the fascinating thing is that both of these markets They've taken very different paths, but they've ended up in the same place. And that place is investors who are in those markets now can't get out and can't get out at any price. And, you know, we tend to think of stock markets and, and, and long-term investors will think, well, oh, you know, I'm going to be faster than other people. I can get out when, when uh, things turn, turn ugly. You know, I'm not going to be the one that's going to be caught. But here, with both Greece and China, we have examples where just all of a sudden, it really doesn't matter how smart you are or how fast you are. There simply is no exit from that figurative burning building, which are, which are these markets in turmoil. And one market that we've actually never talked about in these interviews that you cover every Friday in your service is gold and euros. What are you looking at over there in that market right now? Well, um, gold and euros is... It, it was... We've been bearish on it, and it was following a, a pattern, you know, one-two wave, then another one-two, a smaller degree to the downside, and, and that implied a, a dramatic drop to come, and, and we, we've had that drop now over the past week, uh, which confirmed our outlook. And I think um, it, there's a back-and-forth rhythm to it, because um, it's... it's uh, uh, gold in euros is also dependent upon the euro price, and and the euro over time has been trending down also. But what we see is that in those periods where the euro is is bouncing and having a rally, those are the periods when when gold drops sharply, priced in euros. So we're we're in one of those phases now. The euro looks like it's it can bounce a little bit here, but that's a period where where the, the the selling pressure for gold uh, increases dramatically. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes uh, and chatting today, Chris. I appreciate you offering these insights and look forward to catching up in a couple of weeks. Very good. Thank you for having me.
For anyone interested in learning more about Chris Carolyn's European short-term update and Asian Pacific short-term update, please check out the link below. Thanks for watching Elliott Wave TV.